Okay, guys, so I'm going to show you how we are going to beat the Black Rock Mountain Heroic campaign. Now, ultimately, I am a little higher level on a lot of my decks than this, uh, mostly because I was so lazy I didn't do it up until literally today. Um, but I'm going to show you the general tactic because it works at whatever level, level you are. Now, I recorded a Tyrion run. And I also recorded a Chalga run, but I'm going to kind of interchangeably run between the two of them. Essentially, there are only a few units that you really need to do this correctly. And the number one unit that you need is Banshee. Banshee is going to make this much easier than it ought to be. You then also need some kind of unbound tank. I would recommend going for the Quill War because there's a lot of elemental damage. You definitely need Harpies with Poison because they make a lot of the bosses. And actually, you, you wouldn't be able to deal the damage necessary to beat a lot of the bosses in the way that we do. You kind of need well pegs with flame burst. They're very useful. I quite like running the Griffin Rider, but I also don't mind running pretty practically anything else. I'm going to show you who I, what I did it with on Rend. Like, for instance, this was my Rend deck that I did it on. This was my Baron deck that I did it on. You can see that there's a lot of common elements, but ultimately a few things change. Like on my Rend deck, I'm going to run Dark Eye Miner and I'm going to run Skeletons instead. But they're still the core of well pegs, Banshee, um, Quillbore and Harpies of Poison Talon also work. And obviously on Tyrion, same core, but I also add in a Harvest Golem. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the tactics, hopefully do a little bit of um, drawing over the screen so you guys can see exactly what you need to do. I'm going to show you the tactics of both Chalga and Tyrion, uh, and we'll go through the entire campaign. So let's get into it. So I'm going to go kind of interchangeably between Chalga and also between um, Tyrion, just because I don't want to show you two times on the same one. Uh, but essentially, it's pretty simple. Uh, with this particular boss, what we're looking to do is essentially control these two lanes. We're not as bothered about this one, realistically. This one doesn't matter as much. These two lanes are going to give you the primary way of winning. Now, a Molten Giant spawns just off screen over here. You drop well pegs on him to keep him busy, and they should actually take him out uh, and also then deal with, uh, like, leave with two kind of split Molten Giants. The kind of gimmick of this map is that the Molten Giants split in two. They also have the Blood of the Mountain passive, which basically means they explode in some damage when they die. Uh, so really, one of the best ways to deal with that is they just take the Molten Giants over. So you want to, as a primary way, get a Banshee over towards this Molten Giant. Now, you might find in some situations that the enemy spawns stuff in front of this Molten Giant. Make sure you deal with that first before you drop the Banshee. But you want to take that Molten Giant, that Molten Giant will then take this tower. This tower then means you can, you can go up here and mine. You want to then take this Molten Giant if you can, or destroy it, whatever you want to. Uh, and essentially that, that means you have control over this gold mine area, which is great because otherwise you can't mine any gold efficiently on this level. So you need to do that to make sure you've got the gold. Once you've done that, it is a simple case of just spawning stuff at the boss from here, which includes things like Harpies, Quillbore, etc. And then just dropping something that can go and get the, the chests. As long as you can defend here, perfectly fine. So let's kind of run through it and see how we do. So as you can see here, oh, uh, I had to restart. I think I, I, think I dropped the, I think I dropped the well pegs completely in the wrong area there. Okay, let's just see how we do again. I, yeah, I dropped. I, I think that was the one where I was like, oh, I've just dropped well pegs like off the map. Okay, so we're going to do the well pegs here. Like we said, we're going to immediately drop Banshee to take over this Molten Giant. As you can see, Banshee into Molten Giant. Boom, done. We're gonna, actually going to back up the Molten Giant with a Tyrion here, which is fantastic. Um, that just means we're going to have a lot more effective push with this Molten Giant on the boss. These well pegs will die, or the whelps themselves will die when that splits into two, but that molten giant will now just stand there and do nothing. So that's great. We'll go for it again. So you're going to find that obviously we've had to go for a big defensive play here. This is why I quite like the harvest golem, but you can practically do anything in this situation, anything that you've got to defend. Um, we drop the griffin rider so we can take out the backline dwarf. We're dropping them the um, harvest golem in front of these guys. These guys will die very quickly, and then we just have the. Um, we just have the Fire Elemental and the Bear to take care of, but they don't do a huge amount of single target damage, so we end up being perfectly fine in this situation. Uh, and as you can see, we are also now starting to attack this Molten Giant over on the side here. Harpy's a great defensive tool as well versus some of these units. And we're actually now going to take over the middle Molten Giant. So that's now going to take over this. And that'll start to walk down the center. We have the healing talent, which is great, because even if we deal a bit of damage to them, they'll actually come back and uh, sort of obviously uh, be useful to us. 
We're actually going to kill the one over on the left-hand side, which is perfectly fine. Griffin Rider with the extended range talent will kill them without them moving, and then also won't get blown up in the resulting um, in the resulting fallout. So perfectly fine. We're off to a great start. This is exactly what we wanted to see. Uh, and we're just going to keep spawning stuff next to the boss. Now, the boss will split, I think, three times? Splits into two, then splits into two again, um, which does a lot of damage in a big area. So you just have to be careful of that, that the, bo the boss will split... Um, sometimes you'll see this where the, the boss spawns these sappers that will blow up your tower, but you have a very quick way of retaking it with your harpy. So that's what I end up doing here. But the boss is single target. So if you can just overwhelm the boss with stuff, you're going to end up being fine. I drop a quill ball just so I can start getting the, um, start getting the chests. I'm not being threatened on the other side of the map here. I will use another banshee to try and go for practically anything. I actually end up taking over the fire elemental, but that's okay. Like dropping the fire elemental um, and getting the, the fire elemental here is okay because the fire elemental will resist that explosive damage. Um, I think it also casts, yeah, living bomb, but the living bomb there uh, ended up doing a huge amount of work. And uh, yeah, we end up taking that down pretty easily. Right, I'm going to skip over to my Chalga attempt on the next one because... Uh, yeah, well, Omnitron's very easy, but yeah, we'll, we'll go over to Chalga for this one just to show you how we, you know, we're doing it with the same the same kind of deck with different leaders. Right, I don't really know what to say about this one. This is the easiest heroic, one of the easiest heroics in the entire campaign. Um, the number one thing that kind of get, I'm just going to skip forward a bit because I obviously, didn't, I obviously was like AFK. The number one thing to, to pay attention to is that the um, Omnitrons now drop a permanent field on the floor, so you have to be aware of that. And they also occasionally spawn a mountain giant down the right hand side, uh, which you can deal with with your harpy. As you know, your harpy's your um, your banshee. One of the things that you may run into problems with is that they have uh, chain lightning in the deck. So harpies, if your harpies aren't a high enough level, they might get one shot by the chain lightning. It's okay. You just need to like cycle back to two uh, harpies and get them back going. But this this entire map is made significantly easier by just having flying minis. Flying minis just make this very trivial because they essentially just go straight over the electrical fields. And you can see here, we are not running into any sh uh, trouble in any shape or form with Chalga. It is laughably easy when you've got the flying minis. And we also have um, extra ways of dealing with the drakes, because obviously, usually drake is difficult to deal with if you're just running something like harpies. But we have Griffin Rider, which deals with the drakes. And we also have um, Murloc Tide Hunters, which deal with the drake as well. And here is our first uh, mountain giant or molten giant. We're going to just drop the well pegs to kind of get it in the way. And we actually don't even need to really take this one over. We can kill it pretty quickly. Sometimes you do need to take it over. Sometimes you don't. But again, in this situation, don't really need to take it over. We also deal with the um, uh, fire hammer pretty easily. Just not much else to say. It's, it's a simple case of just rinsing and repeating your flying minis onto the Omnotroms. They, they are laughably easy to kill. The biggest gimmick is the electrical fields that stay on the floor, but if you're running flying minis, you basically completely negate that. Uh, and it's just, yeah, like I said, just a case of making sure that you drop something that is going to tank the damage whilst your harpies do the majority of the work. And that's why I've said harpies are very important. Uh, one thing I would say is try to make sure you control the meeting stone on this level. Uh, it just gives you free access to the uh, the gold mine. And not that you need the gold mine to win, to be completely honest with you, but um, it just helps a little bit. Try not to try not to blow up the uh, Omnitrons on the gold mines as well. It just means that you will never ever farm, which is a bit of a pain. Should I should have, just a little side note? Probably should have dropped uh, Quillball there. That probably would have saved more of my harpies. Not that it matters because we are about to win this uh, with one more spawn of a harpies or one more spawn of a Griffin Rider of any or practically anything. To be honest with you, I actually just spawn a spawn a Banshee there to deal damage to the boss. And yeah, easy enough. Very, very simple. It's one of the one of the most easy uh, heroic fights there is. So we're going to jump on to the next one, which is Emperor Thorison is quite hard, but there was a very easy trick to make it work. So we're going to we're going to show you the Emperor Thorison trick now. Okay, Emperor Thorison. So this essentially this is where some of your squad minis are not going to be great because well pegs count for like six souls and they just spawn mountain giants over and over again they're still useful and it's not the worst thing in the world if you proc it but just be a little bit careful where you're using your well pegs try and use it for direct damage on the boss if you can help it they're, they're a bit of a waste if you use them to deal with a mountain giant 
this boss is re relatively straightforward if you can get a good game plan going. What you need to do is deal with whatever's coming at you this way um, with like harpies or whatever, because right now I can see I've got a Warsong Raider and a Molten Giant. So I can just drop harpies here and it won't be a problem. Uh, we then want to basically get our harpies onto Emperor Thoris and turned away with a Quillball. Emperor Thorison cannot attack air units at all, has to rely on other things to attack air units, like spawning a Pyromancer, for instance. Um, so if you can get your harpies onto Emperor Thorison, it is very easy. But what will happen is you will see Molten, molten Giants spawn down these sides. It is actually quite easy to delay and stall them by simply taking over one of them with a Banshee. So if you take over one Molten Giant on these sides of the Banshee, they will get stuck fighting forever, which means you can just use one lane as your dedicated attack lane. If you've got good defensive units like um, Harvest Golem or even Tyrion, they can also stall for a very long time. And that's kind of the name of the game on this. It's about stalling one of the lanes or stalling these spam of Molten Giants while you just get the work done on the boss. So here, I just want to make sure that the Harpies kill off the... Um, I'm trying to make sure that the Harpies kill off the... Um, what's it called? The Warsong Raider first, because... Uh, we want to make sure that uh, it doesn't do too much damage to the base. If the Harpies got stuck on the Molten Giant, we would have got you know stuck on the base for ages. But this is what I mean about squad units on this level. Uh, we've just now got a billion spawns of these Molten Giants. Very easy for us to kind of go for a 1-2 attack here. We can use Tyrion to defend one of them, and we can take over the other. So we've got two coming down the right-hand side. Drop Tyrion to defend this one, and then we take over this one. Actually, going to take over the one behind. I don't know why I did that. Why didn't I just take over the one attacking my base? I would, have, I would have really have just taken over the one attacking my base. But we're going to drop Harpies here to deal with it. And then we're also going to drop a Griffin Rider. They won't get through the Tyrion very easily. So we're now just kind of looking to cycle back towards another um, uh, another Banshee if we can help it. To be completely honest with you guys, if I had just done something normal, like take over the Banshee, take over the Molten Giant that was right in front of my base, I probably wouldn't have had much of a problem here. But nonetheless, we're fine. We now take over this one here as well. Tyrion tanks for ages. And you can see that uh, because Emperor Thorazin can't attack air units, we got the Harpies on him in one push and he died. I can show you that on Chalga as well, just in case. There's, I did it slightly differently on Chalga and obviously didn't have Tyrion to tank. So I will show you this one on Chalga because it does can play out a little differently if you don't have like a dedicated tank unit. Right, this is my Chalga version of it. Um... I'll just skip to when I actually go, because apparently I wait forever, wait forever on Chaga. Okay, here we go. We're going to go in a minute. Right, so I'm going to drop a Banshee on this one immediately, because I have the Banshee in my opening hand. You might not always have Banshee in your opening hand, but that's good. Uh, and then we're going to drop a Griffin Rider, because we want to take out that um, uh, Firehammer, because Firehammers can actually deal quite a bit of damage to, to um, Molten Giants, so it can become a bit of a pain. In this situation, obviously, we are dropping Harpies again. We try to turn the Pyromancer, but it doesn't quite work. I messed that up a little bit. But, I mean, to be honest with you, it's not just it's not just um, uh, Harpies that can do the majority of the work here. It is also Wellpegs. Wellpegs on the boss can also do a significant amount of work. And as you can see, I've just taken over one of the Molten Giants. This will now get stuck here forever. In the meantime, we just have a huge amount of damage going down onto uh, Emperor Thorison. Got a lot got a lot of damage done here, by the way. Really, really fantastic and got a lot of damage done. And it really just puts Emperor Thorison within like one hit of a, a well peg. So what I'm gonna do is gonna drop well pegs on his head. That was really simple. Killed him in like a few seconds. Can do the same thing if you don't have a tank unit to delay. Okay, so now we're on to Rend. Rend is an interesting one, interesting one in the sense that I don't actually think it's that hard. Again, Banshee becomes a little bit of an MVP. It's pretty much an MVP all the way through Black Rock Mountain, but it becomes a little bit of MVP in this sense. Um, what Rend will do is, while Rend's on his dragon, will lay eggs every time it gets around. So if you blow up these eggs, they will come back by the time that Rend gets round. So you do want to deal with them because they will periodically spawn whelps, and it's really annoying. So we do want to like immediately clear these. We want to clear these. We want to clear all of them if we can help it because it'll help keep your base pretty stable. Um, you'll have a Molten Giant that should attack you from this direction. So we're just going to spawn a Banshee once it gets close to the base. Don't spawn a ban Banshee in anticipation. Spawn it, when it once it gets close to the base. After that, what you're looking to do is spawn your Harpies or like whatever. If you've got any other anti-air, basically, um, kind of away from Rend. 
And then when Rend, when when those harpies are approaching Rend, you want to drop a quill ball or something similar to turn Rend away and try and maximize the damage that the harpies can get on Rend when he's in his flying mode. After Rend has dropped to the floor, he will cast Living Bomb and that will blow up everything around him. But he is so much easier to kill when he's on the floor. You just drop your harpies on him. He cannot attack air units. So essentially it becomes really easy. So we're going to do the same thing again. Griffin Rider again, another bit, another kind of little MVP on this map. It does deal with the whelps really easily. And you're going to see here, we're just going to blow up all of these whelp eggs and deal with it on that side. Get a couple of hits onto Rend, but not that many. But yeah, we take out a good number of those eggs. As you can see, Molten Giant's walking its way down. We will take it over here. Sorry, just quickly responding to something. Uh, so we're going to drop again, do the same kind of thing here. We're going to use, we're actually going to use, um, I kind of I kind of misplayed there. I was hoping that my Griffin Rider would actually attack those whelps, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, we're going to play the Harpy trick here. So this is what we're going to do now. We're not that bothered about the stuff attacking our base. Our base should be able to deal with it. But we are going to do the dropping the um, Quillball right behind Rend. And actually having Quillball with a slower exit speed is quite good in this situation because it just means that uh, Ren stays stuck on it for a little bit longer and it doesn't start moving. But now we've got Ren on the floor. This is where we're going to cycle back to trying to get our harpies out. And once our harpies are out, this becomes laughably easy. It's it's really not that big of a deal. Um, even though we've got people kind of attacking our base, he'll get shredded really quickly by the poison and we end up getting the win. Very, very simple. Um, again, with, with Ren, it is specifically kind of about making sure you deal with the whelps and then timing your harpies with a quill ball to make sure you can take Rend off his mount as quickly as possible. And then when he's on the floor, he becomes really easy to kill. We're now going to go to the final boss, which is probably the hardest, but I have a really cheesy tactic that I've employed on most of my leaders. There is only one time I've not been able to pull this off, and this was when I was doing my horde run through with Cairn. I had to play it a bit more uh, to the ground. Didn't record that one, unfortunately. But what I'll do is I'll talk about the tactics that we're going to be using in this situation. Okay, I'll quickly just jump over to that. Okay, with uh, Dracosath, it's hard. It is hard. Uh, but what you'll find is that Banshee, again, is a really, really important tool in this case. Now, what I had, and this is what usually happens to me, a Molten Giant spawns down here, and always Dracosath spawned a load of stuff down this side. However, I've had versions where Dracosath will drop a few things on this meeting stone here. So if that's the case, if you're getting that start frequently, I would wait until the Molten Giant gets a little bit closer to you to do the play that I'm going to do. But in my play, even if I dropped Banshee here, I would still get my all of my spawns getting dropped on this side. So what I do is I drop a Banshee here to grab that Molten Giant as soon as it can. Um, when the Banshee gets to this bit here, so when the Banshee starts to activate the um, uh, the fire, I drop my Kobold here so we can go over towards this um, stone. Once I've taken the Molten Giant, I'm going to show you, once I've taken the Molten Giant, I then spawn basically a load of stuff, load of flying stuff specifically, because again, flying very, very good on this map. I, I spawn a load of flying stuff specifically to follow the Molten Giant and try and get as much damage done to Dracosath as possible. I basically try to cheese Dracosath a little bit in this case. So we're going to use a Quillbot. This is really, so this is really important. You need to get Dracosath to do his big attack before your Harpies get there. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to drop this. The big attack comes down, and then my Harpies can get on the boss. Um, we have a big defense to make over here. So what I'm going to use is I'm using Harvest Golem to defend this while I can. And I'm going to use Griffin Rider to actually follow up and go for the boss. So we're just trying to defend as much as we can here. We will use Harpies once again for the defense, because if we don't, we will lose. So once the Ogre Mage is targeted on the base, you spawn the Harpies on top of the Ogre Mage. And I cut this a little bit. This got very close, by the way. You, I cut this way too close. Uh, but luckily, Fire Elemental doesn't actually do that much damage, so we ended up getting it done. Oh, I've just accidentally moved that. But now, Dracosath, with that one cheese play, is now essentially dead. So, um, yeah, we just we spawn a load of... Um, uh, whelps on him, he, he blows them up and then he dies to the Whelpeg's Flame Burst. I'm going to show you this in Chalga as well, so you can kind of see how I did it on there, but I do the same thing. It's just a bit of a cheese tactic. Essentially, we use Banshee to set up one big push to get as much damage down as possible, and we just defend with, with whatever we can. And I would recommend that you just keep trying that formula if you have the same spawn patterns as me, um, because it's the I, I found the easiest way to kind of get uh, Draxath down. Let's jump over to um, jump over to, to Chalga. Okay, this is my Chalga attempt. Um, so, again, very similar. Nothing spawns on the left-hand side for me this time round. Um, and I'm going to take over the 
Molten Giant as it walks towards me. So I do that. I've had two Fire Elementals spawn over on this side. We don't have Harpies straight away, but that's okay. We are going to spawn them a little bit later. But we have to, we have to do the same thing again where we get the... Well, actually, we didn't even need to use the Quill Ball this time around because he, he did this before, um, uh, before my Harpies got there, which is another way of doing this, by the way. Uh, but we've got a really big push coming on. Now, what I need to do here is I'm actually going to take over one of these Fire Elementals. Uh, and I'm going to use a um, set of Murloc Tidehunters just to ensure that we kind of get this down. Uh, and we got, again, very low on that push, but that's okay. We're in an okay spot. We're going to drop the Harpies once more. We're going to drop Wellpegs right behind Drakasath. Unfortunately, I think that he has got the big hit, so I did kind of mess that up. But it's okay because I have my Wellpegs still going, and I also have my um, Quillbore. So with Wellpegs, they're also just as good as the Harpies. Pretty simple. So... That's kind of how I cheese Drakasath in pretty much all of my leaders. Like I said, the only, there was only one time I couldn't do that, and that's because Core Hounds kept spawning on the left-hand side. If you get the Core Hounds spawning on the left-hand side, what I'd recommend that you do is you actually try to set up to take the tower. If you then take the tower, um, you know, it, it becomes a lot easier to kind of like mount a defense, and you won't take your base HP as low. You can use your, your Banshees a bit more defensively on Molten Giants that approach the base. But that was a tactic that worked for me. Um, obviously, I appreciate that not everyone's spawn patterns are going to be the same, uh, but it was a pretty easy way for me to beat Drakasath on pretty much most of my heroes. So there you go. That is heroic Blackrock across a couple of uh, Tyrion and, and um, like across Tyrion and uh, and Chalga, and hopefully it helps you guys do well. I'll see you soon.